the planet that shouldn't be touched. Imagine standing on a world where the air would melt your face, where the pressure would crush your bones, and where the clouds rain acid instead of water. A world where the sun glows dimly through a choking orange sky, yet its heat is unbearable. This is Venus. Venus is the second planet from the sun and Earth's nearest planetary neighbour. To the naked eye it shines brightly in our sky, the so-called morning star or evening star, but this radiant facade hides a nightmare world beneath. Venus is not just inhospitable, it is ferociously and murderously unwelcoming. And yet some scientists and visionaries believe that with time, technology and determination we could transform this hell into something astonishing, a second Earth. But if we could tame it, cool it, transform its skies, this is the story of an impossible dream, of science that borders on fantasy, of ambition measured not in years but in millennia. This is the deep dive into whether we can truly terraform Venus. But before we dream of turning sulfuric skies into sunsets and acid storms into gentle rains, we must confront the core question, can we conquer a planet forged in fire, a twin born under a curse? Venus is often called Earth's twin. Both planets are roughly the same size, have similar gravity, and likely formed from similar materials in the early solar system. But that's where the resemblance ends. While Earth developed into a life-sustaining haven, Venus evolved into a scorching inferno. Why? The key lies in the greenhouse effect. On Earth, greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide trap just enough heat to keep the planet warm. But Venus underwent a runaway version of this effect. Volcanic eruptions release massive amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. Unlike Earth, Venus lacked the plate tectonics and oceans to lock that carbon away. The atmosphere thickened and thickened until it became a smothering blanket, trapping more heat than it could release. Today, surface temperatures on Venus exceed 460 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt lead. The atmospheric pressure is 92 times that of Earth. Imagine standing a kilometre under the sea. That's how heavy the air feels. Venus is the ultimate cautionary tale of climate gone berserk. This violent divergence from Earth makes one thing clear. Even twins can lead radically different lives. And the path Venus took might still echo in Earth's future should we fail to learn from it. The atmosphere from hell. To terraform Venus, we would need to radically change its atmosphere. The planet's sky is dominated by thick clouds of sulfuric acid, suspended in an atmosphere made almost entirely of carbon dioxide. There is virtually no oxygen, no nitrogen, and no water vapour. The air is not just unbreathable, it is actively corrosive. The first step in making Venus habitable will be to remove or chemically alter this atmosphere. That's no small feat. The mass of Venus's atmosphere is over 90 times that of Earth's. Removing it would be like trying to lift every drop of water in Earth's oceans and hurl it into space. One idea is to chemically convert CO2 into oxygen and solid carbon using massive atmospheric processing plants. Another involves cooling the planet to condense carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere as dry ice, but cooling a planet this hot is a monumental task and both solutions would take vast amounts of time and energy. Some have even proposed siphoning the atmosphere into space using giant electromagnetic rails or gravity assists, a feat so gargantuan it borders on science fiction. And yet, if humanity ever hopes to make Venus Earth-like, this hellish sky must be our first battle. Cooling a planet on fire, even if we could reduce the carbon dioxide, Venus would still be far too hot for human habitation. The planet receives about twice the solar energy that Earth does, and thanks to its thick clouds, almost all of it gets trapped. To cool Venus, we would need to reduce the incoming solar radiation. Enter the sunshade concept. Scientists have proposed placing enormous mirrors or reflective sails in space positioned at Venus's L1 Lagrange point, a spot where the gravity of Venus and the sun balance out. These sunshades would block a portion of sunlight from reaching Venus, potentially cooling the planet over centuries. Another radical idea is to use artificial means to reflect sunlight back into space. Giant orbiting reflectors, aerosols in the upper atmosphere or reflective clouds of engineered particles could all play a role. Cooling the planet might take 100 to 1,000 years. It would be one of the longest and most ambitious projects in human history. But the idea isn't just theoretical. Similar geoengineering methods are already being discussed to combat climate change here on Earth. Venus then becomes a grand laboratory for planetary scale solutions. If we learn how to cool Venus, 
could we also learn how to save our own world? Bombs, bacteria and other wild ideas. The more extreme the challenge, the more extreme the proposed solutions. Some scientists have floated the idea of using nuclear weapons to catalyze chemical changes in Venus's atmosphere, detonating hydrogen bombs in the upper atmosphere. Could in theory, break down carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide and oxygen. But the fallout and practical limitations make this idea highly controversial. A more elegant concept involves the use of synthetic biology. Could we create genetically engineered microbes that thrive in high temperature, high acid environments and slowly convert CO2 into oxygen? This is the microbial terraforming approach. It would require unprecedented advances in synthetic life and long-term deployment across the planet's atmosphere. Others suggest crashing icy asteroids into Venus to deliver water and potentially trigger chemical reactions. Each idea stretches the limits of current science, but each also expands our understanding of what might one day be possible. The common thread? Ingenuity in the face of impossibility. Humanity has always pushed past what it once believed to be limits, and Venus may be the ultimate test of that spirit. Floating cities, the first step toward terraforming. While surface terraforming might take centuries or millennia, there's a more immediate vision for Venus, not on the surface, but in the skies. At about 50 kilometers above the surface, Venus's thick atmosphere becomes surprisingly Earth-like. The pressure is similar to sea level on Earth, the temperature is around 25 DEC, and the radiation levels are lower than on Earth, thanks to the dense atmosphere acting as a shield. Here, humanity could build floating cities, massive airships or balloon-based habitats suspended in the Venusian clouds. These habitats would float because breathable air, oxygen and nitrogen is a lifting gas in the Venusian atmosphere. These floating cities would serve as research stations, industrial bases and perhaps the first foothold in our long effort to tame Venus. They would offer a way to begin studying the planet up close, deploying atmospheric processes and even laying the groundwork for more ambitious transformation. In a strange twist, we might live in the sky while we reshape the surface below. It's a poetic inversion. Humans adapting like birds to an alien sky, striving to bring beauty to a place that nature rendered uninhabitable. The great decompression, thinning the atmosphere. If we ever hope to walk on Venus, we must address its monstrous atmospheric pressure. The planet's air is so dense that landing a probe is like diving into a deep ocean. To make the surface safe, we would have to remove much of this atmosphere or fundamentally alter its composition. One theoretical approach is to bind carbon dioxide with reactive elements introduced into the atmosphere, producing stable solids like carbonates. These could rain down and form surface deposits, effectively removing greenhouse gases from circulation. But to do this on a planetary scale would require massive industrial systems, millions of autonomous drones or robotic factories operating for centuries. Alternatively, we might accelerate the escape of atmospheric gases into space using artificial magnetic fields or ion drives powered by solar energy. These devices would slowly push the lighter molecules away, gradually thinning the air. It's a slow burn, like watching a glacier melt, but one that could, over time, rewrite the entire face of a planet. This process would be our cosmic exhale, releasing Venus's breath so that one day we may breathe there ourselves. Lighting the night, Venusian days and Earth-like rhythms, even if we solve Venus's heat and atmosphere, we face another bizarre challenge. Time. <laughs> A day on Venus, one rotation of the planet, lasts 243 Earth days. Even more strangely, Venus rotates in the opposite direction to most planets, meaning the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. Such long, grown-out days create extreme temperature differences between the light and dark sides, and they disrupt the circadian rhythms humans rely on. To terraform Venus, we may need to artificially create day-night cycles. Orbiting mirrors or light reflectors could bathe parts of the planet in controlled cycles of illumination. Alternatively, we could establish habitats with fully enclosed lighting systems, simulating Earth 24-hour rhythm, regardless of external conditions. It might not change the planet's spin, but it would allow life, human or engineered, to flourish in harmony with the rhythms we evolved with. In this sense, terraforming Venus is not just about altering geology or atmosphere, it's about sculpting time itself to match the cadence of life. Terraforming from above, orbital infrastructure, 
changing a planet demands tools of imaginable scale, and those tools may not stand on Venus, they may orbit above it. Massive orbital stations could serve as solar power generators, atmospheric processors and command hubs. They could relay energy to the surface via microwave or laser transmission, powering the machines that crawl the hellish ground below. These stations might deploy autonomous swarms, robots, drones and weather-modifying satellites that continuously alter the planet in small, deliberate steps. From space, we could monitor every change in real time. The thinning of clouds, the drop in surface temperature, the emergence of lakes where lava plains once ruled. Terraforming is not just a ground operation, it's a cosmic ballet of technology, energy and time. Venus becomes not merely a destination, but a canvas, with orbital brushes painting a new reality. Ethical horizons, should we terraform Venus? With all the science and spectacle comes a haunting question. Should we do this? Venus is a world forged by nature's extremes. It may harbour secrets of planetary formation, of atmospheric chemistry, even of lost microbial life. In reshaping it, do we risk erasing something precious? There's also the moral weight of prioritisation. Should we pour trillions into Venus while Earth still struggles with poverty, climate change and inequality? Does our reach for new worlds make us blind to the one we already have? Terraforming Venus challenges not only our engineering, but our ethics. It forces us to consider what it means to be stewards of life, not just here, but anywhere. To alter a planet is to write a new chapter of nature, authored not by biology, but by will. A new Eden or a glorious mirage? In the end, terraforming Venus may take thousands of years. It may demand technologies we've yet to dream of and generations of unwavering commitment. The planet may never be a second Earth, but something new entirely. A hybrid world, half alien, half made in humanity's image. Perhaps our great-grandchildren will watch clouds swirl above sapphire lakes. Perhaps Venus will remain a floating city above a churning abyss forever resisting our embrace. Or perhaps in trying to reshape another world, we finally find the clarity to preserve our own. Terraforming Venus is not just about planetary science. It's a mirror held up to our ambition, our courage, and our humility. To ask whether we can remake hell into a second earth is to ask who we truly are and who we dare to become. The dream that shapes us. So, can we make hell a second earth? The answer is not simple. Technically, maybe. Practically, not yet. Ethically, perhaps never without controversy. But the question itself is part of something deeper. It reminds us that we are a species that dreams beyond its limits that dares to see oceans in deserts and cities in clouds. Terraforming Venus might remain a dream, but it is a dream worth having, not just to reach the stars, but to better understand our place among them. If you found this documentary thought-provoking, subscribe and join us as we continue to explore the cosmos, one impossible idea at a time.